Hey guys, I know I haven't been doing a lot of videos recently. I've been a little busy, but I'm going to do a Civilization 5 video. I've been kind of wanting to for quite a while. And I got this hacked client thing that's really cool. It's great. Uh, it's fun to play with. And so I decided what I'm going to do, because I want to cheat in the game, but I still want it to be challenging. So I'm going to set the level on Deity, which is like the hardest level to do. Only a few people genuinely have beat it. Uh, beat the game on that level, and then I'm going to make it so I can only have one city, the one city challenge, Civilization 5. So there aren't going to be any restrictions on the other teams, aside from there's not going to be any uh, spying, because what I'm going to do, part of the cheat, I'm going to make it so that I have all the technologies and all the uh, uh, cultural unlocks when I start off the game, and all the other civilizations have to start off from the beginning. Okay, what should I be? I beat Germany, but I don't know. It doesn't really amount to much in the game. So I'm going to set the difficulty level as the hardest level, make it quick, and do it on the earth type. So if you explore enough land, you can kind of figure out where you are. It's kind of easy to know um, where everyone is. I'm going to have no city-states, and I'm going to add lots of people to the map. I can only add 22, okay. Yep. And no espionage. Here we go, in the journey. This is kind of a nice place to set up camp. I always want to set up my cities next to a river, and hopefully this is next to an ocean. Because otherwise, I won't be able to place any sea units, which will be pretty bad. Let's start off with pottery. Oh yeah, I'm going to go ahead and set all my technologies to researched. Didn't, oh. So I had to manually click on all of these icons here. It took a while. And one thing that happened that I didn't exactly think about was I uh, when I restart satellites, uh, it ended up that I, I see everything on the map, so that'd be quite helpful. Um, that wasn't really intended, but. Yeah, I mean, no one else has founded a city, and I don't think there are, I don't think anyone, there might be a few people on the South American continent, so I'm going to start off with building a bunch of buildings in my town instead of military units. I also need to unlock all of my uh, cultural things, whatever you call these. So I'm going to do tradition, blah, blah, blah. Now with these three branches, you have to pick one um, of the three because you can't have um, all of these open at once. And this one is best for large, sprawling empires. I usually do order because, you know, I'm an evil overlord, you know, it's kind of what I do. Um, but since I have one town, it would be much more logical to do autocracy or freedom. But I'm going to go with autocracy because I don't really need specialists. I'm going to need my military units to be sufficient. So, with all of the uh, the branches, the cultural branches that I adopted, I also got a lot of specialists. So I'm going to go ahead and put this guy here, and I'm going to purchase these tiles and put these guys there. So, so far, so good. What I plan on doing, I do this a lot with barbarians and even sometimes to lose their civilizations. I'll take my units, and I, I've got a great general right here. You need to be careful with this sometimes, um, but I have I go up here as a barbarian camp, um, and I make sure every time one spawns in that I kill that 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 barbarian that spawned. But I never take a camp because I I can retreat back. This guy regains his health. He can go back, kill another person, gains XP really fast. So it's quite helpful. <laughs> I'll do that with battleships a lot. Like some loser country um, founds a city on one of these islands which happens quite a bit um, around the middle of the game, then I'll send battleships around, just lay down artillery on it, and they can't 
do anything normally if there's six or seven battleships. And I level up my battleships really quickly. It's funny too, because if you didn't know, I've got a really powerful processor. I'm using my laptop right now, um, but I've got a really, I've still got a pretty good processor in my laptop. It's an i7 that right now when it's plugged in, it's running at usually 4 gigahertz. Sometimes it'll run at 3.7, it's going to come out. It's running at 4 gigahertz likely right now. And since there's 22 people on the map, next turn, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine seconds to process this. That, that's a lot of people. It normally will literally take me half a second to move on to the next turn. We've got uh, General Marat Reyes, which I, I've really never heard of him in the Russian uh, Navy because, again, there is no Russian Navy aside from nuclear submarines, so I think they just came up with great generals for Russia because um, on all your specialists, they, they name the specialists in Civilization V, right? Like this guy, Lysander, General Lysander for the Russian military. Well, um, I mean, this guy might have existed, but there really aren't many great generals for Russia, <laughs> aside from nuclear submarine, um, what do we call them, uh, managers, people that, uh, commanders in nuclear submarines. There really aren't many great <laughs> Russian admirals. But I don't even know what this guy's doing. He's just kind of patrolling the waters. I mean, we don't have any naval units, and he can't do anything. Maybe he's going fishing or something. I'm going to have him go over to here. Chill out right here. Oh, here's Rome. I like Rome. I just upgraded this unit, by the way. I mean, in I mean the modern like in the civil, not the civil, the Cold War, Russia definitely had a navy. I mean, it still wasn't uh, powerful uh, compared to um, the the U.S. Navy. I mean, they had really good nuclear submarines for their um, capabilities, but. I mean, before that, they didn't have a navy in World War II. Like, seriously, I, I do not think they had a navy. They probably had patrol units, but other than that, I really doubt they even had one. So, progress has been made. I've built quite a lot of buildings. In fact, that's all that I've built. I haven't built any other units, aside from one worker. Got all this here. Got quite a few wonders. Some more buildings. There we go. And this guy's leveling up quick. Unfortunately, I wasn't paying attention and the general got killed, so. So these buttheads here founded a town and they're gonna kill this barbarians when you go ahead and finish them off. Those meager XP points. What? That's ridiculous. And I know it looks pretty stupid, but I personally built uh, the railroad for the city, because these guys do a mediocre job. Um, but it just it takes these guys for forever to build something over here and go over here. If I want to move military units around quickly. So it goes around here, goes this way, goes to the city, and then down around back up here. So it's very, f uh, make it a lot more efficient for units to get around. And also, I found another barbarian camp right here, but Apparently when you're like a high enough level uh, unit, like a, a certain amount of levels over another unit, or a barbarian unit, it tries to escape from you. So I've been going around this camp non-stop trying to catch up with this guy. And you know, he moves and then I move, and then he moves, I move, and I can never, it's getting kind of irritating. I'll have to probably get another unit to come in to kill this guy. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, it's like about 10 minutes now, so thanks for watching and I'll have another episode hopefully pretty soon.